we're together here. Um, two, uh, two obviously really good opponents on the road this week. Um, and, uh, you know, guys have the day off today. We'll, we'll get to uh, get to work tomorrow on cleanup from uh, last game and then moving forward to uh, a full week ahead of us on the road. One of the things that Tom said last night, he was just talking about roster construction in general, and you touched on this a little bit on your radio show, but he said, like, that we're all still feeling, or at least coaches are still feeling like, the effects of COVID and how that has impacted building rosters and building teams. How, how do you think we're getting closer to that being in the past? Like how much is that is what happened with COVID and the subsequent decisions about that? How much is that still impacting the game? I mean, I think it, it uh, makes rosters older, um, the ones that choose to either um, keep players for an extra COVID year or, 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 you know, take a player who has an extra COVID year. I think it generally makes rosters uh, in in today's game, older um, than what they what they normally would be. Um, I think we're we're the outlier <clears throat> in the sense that uh, while we've seen that uh, impact with justice, we probably haven't seen it. I, I guess with Sean as well, and we haven't seen it um, maybe to the degree in terms of the consistency um, on the roster. But I, I think it generally makes rosters older and. You know, I think roster construction is uh, something that uh, we obviously need to really look hard at uh, and ways in which, um, you know, we can maybe continue to learn things in just today's, today's ever-changing climate. And, uh, um, you know, those are more probably things you're processing right now, but more also, you know, off season, yeah. you know, thoughts. When you say that it makes rosters older, is it a different kind of older though? Because you're not always dealing with guys, you, yeah. you might be dealing with fifth, six year guys, but they're not fifth, six year guys from your program. Which yeah, I, that I, yeah, I think when you have that, that that's maybe where the advantage can lie. Um, now in some cases, you, you, you want that young man to move on because you feel like, hey, there needs to be room for a younger player. Maybe he's going to be a sophomore to grow. Um, so there's those, those, those real decisions as well. Maybe it's mutually beneficial for both uh, parties to kind of to move on. But um, I think the one, you know, Tyson Walker's one where I think he mentions uh, the value of having that extra COVID year. He's your starting point guard. He also uh, is a transfer who has an extra year. And I think they've seen the benefit benefit of that with just his him staying in the program, and it's benefited him, and it's benefited you know their their team. Um, you know, uh, you look at uh, Penn State starting point guard is an All Conference, you know, probably first team All League player. He's really benefited from um, you know having an extra COVID year. So there's certainly examples of that. Uh, Coach, on the radio, you were talking a little bit about uh, Zed's physical toughness versus mental toughness. And I was just wondering when I heard that, uh, in what ways maybe the, the latter has, has manifested this season in terms of hard times he's had. Uh, just ability to play through. He's an emotional player. So the ability to play through, he's got a heavier load on him now than he ever has. So ability to play through disappointment and play in the moment with a, a better uh, response to uh, struggling play as a team or struggling play individually. He gets caught up in the moment because he's an emotional player. He has not always handled it with the, the, the kind of resiliency that he needs to have, and he's got to continue to grow in that area. Could be a bad officiating call, could be um, just a, a moment where he missed an open look, um, whatever the case may be. That's, I think, where he has to just really grow mentally. And then I know you said with his, his shoulder that, you know, you guys will evaluate that in terms of like if it needs uh, surgery and whatnot after the season. But um, I'm just wondering, uh, because you said that, does that mean that like there's not a significant risk of him like really, you know, re-injuring that like for the rest of the season in a, in a manner that it would require surgery before the end of the season, I guess? Well, I don't want to speak out of turn because um, I don't know if I'm as versed as I need to be in, in, in the specifics of that. But I think what we feel like it can we can manage it through the season right now unless 
you know, the brace really does protect it unless there's something more significant. Even if there was something more significant, I don't know that it would require immediate surgery, but it, it, it could mean that he has to miss another game. When we spoke to Chris Collins last week, he said that from his experience, it gets harder and harder to get back up and compete when you haven't experienced the joy of winning in a long time. He said yeah. the weight training, the nutrition, the film prep, everything yeah. you do, it gets harder for the guys to to get back up and do it again when they haven't won yeah. in a while. Yeah. Is that harder for coaches too? Uh, sure. You know, I sure. I mean, I think it's um, it is is you know, it's just a, it's it's a dark time when you when you are struggling, and. Um, I think it's. I think you have to be able to approach each day with the optimism that hey, we're going to grow and get better. And you know, I was in the office very early on Sunday morning, just prepping for uh, our our group with excitement about what was was coming. Um, uh, and I think that's the approach that's required. And yeah, there there it certainly can be. Uh, challenging, you know, um, you 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 feel these things in a way that just it's hard to it's hard to understand. Um, you know, you eat differently, you you sleep differently, you you just live differently when you're when you're um, you know when you lose a game. So um, it's certainly the case, and I think we have to be mindful of that with our players because. There are some things that we can look at and say, okay, hey, let's just improve here um, for longer stretches, and we'll see the dividends. And then with, with this stretch, correct me if I'm wrong, but other than the Indiana game, it seems like every game you've had a point where you're either winning by a few or you're down by three or four, where you could stop and say, listen, we got to stop here in a bucket. We're, this is a tie game. And it seems like through this stretch, in almost every point where you hit that, you can't get to stop and then yeah. you go back down by six or seven. Do you think that's like a tangible, we struggle on defense with A or B, or is it more of like a resiliency, toughness thing when you get to that spot? I think it's both. We, I think it's both. I think it is a resiliency and toughness thing. And I think I would add um, poor offensive possessions to uh, what has stunted our ability to um, get it to a one possession game or take the lead or get it from eight to six. Um, we've had too many, too many poor offensive possessions, too many um, poor shots, um, sometimes shots in crowds, and then you combine that with at times not being able to. Get, but we got enough stops against Wisconsin. Uh, uh, they're late. We we had enough stops in you know last night's game for the bulk of the game. It was more our offensive possessions were were not good. Sometimes if you miss shots and you have a good offensive possession. You can live with that, but I just think there have been too many times um, in those stretches when we're trying to answer the bell where we just need to have better ones. Chris, you mentioned losing yourself within a game, getting guys to kind of lose yourself within the competition to contribute in different ways other than scoring. Um, for first-year players, is that especially hard to do? Do you see it more commonly in your experience that like second-year and third-year players are able to do that more, or is it not maybe a matter of experience? Yeah, it depends on the player. I mean, players that have always been, you know, two-way guys or have been guys, you know, that have always impacted, you know, Kyle Young impacted the game in a lot of different ways, so he was never really consumed with the scoring. Um, so it just depends on the player. But certainly, um, you know, Dwayne had to really grow from being a scorer to figure out how he could rebound and assist and defend and still impact the game in a positive way, and it took him a while. And then you mentioned it's a dark time, obviously losing so many games around, trying to pick yourself back up. I just know with, with Iowa coming in, or playing in Iowa this week, obviously Patrick McCaffrey took some time away from basketball this year, mental yeah. health reasons. How much is that addressed right now within the program, just getting guys right mentally, not only for this season, but yeah, careers. you know, I think it's something to be mindful of, um, and I, um, I think we as coaches have to be mindful of it uh, with our guys. Um, you know, they're our responsibility, and their mental health is their responsibility, but it's also our responsibility, um, and it's our responsibility to have um, a, an awareness and a, a um, an openness to, to kind of reading where they're at in a, in a given moment. So. 
you know, uh, as I mentioned uh, way back when Patrick um, made that public statement, you know, I think it took a lot of courage on his part uh, because there can still be stigma around athletes when it comes to mental health. So I think it did take real courage on his part just to be honest about some of his struggles with anxiety. Um, and I give him and his family a ton of credit and his teammates a ton of credit for kind of rallying around him and giving him the support he needs. You know, Patrick knows that he's not the only one that, that is struggling with that. And there's a lot of people that uh, are rooting and pulling for him, but he also helped a lot of athletes um, who struggle with anxiety. And the struggle can be very real for him. And there's no question uh, that, that he helped a lot of athletes in that regard. Uh, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but on the radio show, you guys, you said you weren't coming back between the uh, two. Road we're not. Yeah, we're um, not. Yeah, we're what not. are kind of the logistical challenges with that? How does it, the day-to-day -day look when you're kind of uh, I, like this? Yeah, good question. I believe we're staying uh, overnight, I believe, in Iowa City, I think, because it's late tip. Uh, get plenty of sleep. Um, we'll, we'll leave mid, probably mid-morning the next day, so they... You know, sleep's the main reason. Sleep and rest is the main reason. You know, on Friday we'll do we'll do a study uh, study table with our guys, an academic study table uh, for an hour or two, um, and then uh, we'll practice there in West Lafayette on on uh, Friday and Saturday. You you mentioned on your radio show you something about uh, maybe adding a shooter who hasn't played much to the lineup as you're trying to. Space things a little bit. It's just one of the ideas, Adam, I'm kind of thinking through and we're looking at as a staff, do we need to? I, I don't know um, if that's the direction we'll go or not. Okay. And also just uh, looking at Iowa then compared to Iowa now. Um, I know you did, like you said, it's Monday. You haven't dug too much into them yet, but just in general, how different could this game look? Could they look? How much do teams change over the course of the season? And yeah. how different are teams? Yeah. Do you think teams will play against you having seen you the first time yeah um it's a good question i you know i think um i've not dove into them as much since i just think they're very good at home mm -hmm. you know they're very good at home and uh they're a good team but they're very they're very good at home always a great crowd uh energized crowd um so uh, they've got really good players you know we play very well here um played very well offensively and played played well defensively too they're just a really good rebounding team. They're very good defense, or excuse me, they're very good uh, in transition. They're a very good executing team offensively, and their changing defenses can can bother you for sure.